So it's not quite been a year yet, but I have a major repair for my anti-cubic photon. Today I'm replacing the LCD screen. Hey guys, what's going on? Michael here. So this week we're talking about the first major breakdown of my AnyCubic Photon S. So on screen I am running a test right now of the LCD screen uh, starting the exposure just so that I can show you what's going on with it. So this is supposed to project a square box on the screen. But as you can see, I get a random pattern that actually moves a little bit. Um, it kind of has that static pattern that you used to get with old tube televisions. And unfortunately, uh, after talking with AnyCubic, uh, we determined that my screen uh, is broken. Now at the time of doing this video, my printer is not quite a year old. I purchased it May 22nd of 2019. So I didn't even get a full year from this screen before I had this issue. Now in all likelihood, it's just a defect in the screen, but I'm a little disappointed with the longevity of that piece of this uh, equipment. Now I understand that this is a consumable part and that it is known for defects, but nevertheless, I had hoped that I would get a little longer from it. I probably shouldn't be disappointed though with the hundreds of prints that I have gotten out of it. So on screen I am in the process of taking apart uh, the printer so that I can replace this screen. Now you can see on the left hand side um, there is a ribbon cable which is connected to the circuit board. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some finger cots on. If you have a pair of gloves that would work as well, but you really don't want to touch a circuit board with your bare hands. And then I'll use a pair of tweezers to peel off the tape that's holding that ribbon cable and then disconnect the ribbon cable from the circuit board with this pair of tweezers. Once that's disconnected, we'll flip the printer back over and we can remove the screen from the inside of the printer. Now the screen itself is held into a recessed part of this aluminum platform with some double stick tape. And I found that a putty knife, a flexible putty knife, was the easiest way to get underneath of it to pry that screen out of there. The screen's defective, so we don't need to worry too much about doing any damage to it. As long as you don't push the putty knife too deep, you won't hurt the LEDs below. Then the next step after removing the screen is to take a scraper of some kind and to get all the double stick tape off of this recessed groove. According to the instructions that AnyCubic sent me, the tape that they use is a double stick mounting tape from 3M. But I will caution you, uh, the tape that I purchased was too thick to be used for this application and ultimately the tape that worked for me is called a veneer tape which is used in the woodworking industry to stick down veneer as you're uh, templating it out.
Now the tape that you use, you can go about this one of two ways. You can either buy a roll of 1 8 inch wide tape, which is what you see me using here, or you can use some tape that's a little wider stuck to the underside of the, the new screen and then just use a utility knife a hobby knife to trim off the excess if you go that route though just make sure that you protect the screen so that you don't scratch or damage it in any way With the tape now in place, I'm going to take the new screen and fish the ribbon cable down through. You do this from above and the ribbon cable kind of needs to go center up on the left hand side of the opening. You'll see a small gap inside of the machine that that ribbon cable is going to feed down through. Just be careful, ribbon cables are fragile and you don't want to put excess stress on it. After getting the ribbon cable fed through and the screen in place, we'll use a small pair of tweezers to pull up the backing paper from our double stick mounting tape. With the backing paper removed, it's time to stick the screen into place. And remember, you really get one good shot at this. Make sure you don't get the ribbon cable pinched as you put down the left hand side of the screen and get it aligned pretty well. If you're using a tape that's too thick, your screen is going to sit up proud of the surface, which is not good for the durability of your resin vat. So make sure you get an ultra thin mounting tape or use the veneer tape like I said earlier. We'll flip the printer back over and now we'll reconnect the ribbon cable on the left hand side of the circuit board. Make sure to do this gently, you don't want to put excess pressure on it and then once it's reconnected we'll secure it with a small piece of tape. With that part done, it's now time to close up the cabinet again. We're reinstalling the four hex screws into the base to reattach the vent cover and the feet to the bottom of our printer and then we should be good to go. And here you can see the process completed. We've got our new screen installed and when we run a test we get the nice square binding box like what we were supposed to get all along. The screen replacement is not a simple straightforward task and honestly it made me a little nervous to do it. I put it off for a long time trying to use my old screen even though it wasn't working really well. The next step of this process will be to level out the bed to the new screen and hopefully get print results back to what I was getting before all of this started in the first place. Hey, if you like these videos and want to help me keep making them, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button.